revoir, quoi. And then scroll down. Nope. Scroll over. Nope. At the bottom. The chat button. This one? Load. my instructions in the beginning we have what my instructions in the beginning oh you have instructions hold on I'm, I'm liking and sharing make sure as you're signing on that you uh, first of all let us know you're here because we like to talk to people and like and share this video please Give it another couple of minutes. The official live starts at 8 o'clock. We started a few minutes early to give everybody an opportunity to get out. Stacy Burton is watching. Stacy, thank you for joining us. Tell us how your week's going so far. I already know that several people from work said they were going to watch because they're off tomorrow. Oh. Those are the C-shift people. Brad said he would tune in too. I hope he pops in because I'm going to talk trash about him. Today's his, he starts on vacation. He'll be gone for a week. I don't blame him. I know you'd like to take a week away from me too, huh? No response. Sometimes it's just better not to say anything. Well, I know this same time last, no, actually, hold on. Uh, it was next month. I was going to say this same time last year, I was, uh, in, Ta in Dallas, Texas, but that was in October. Let us know if you're here so we can make sure our comments are working, please. Yeah, please, somebody just comment something. Tell us a joke. Or even just a hey, or a hi, or a or, capital K. Or a mathematical equation that one of us will try to figure out. Just something to let us know that everything's working. Please. We'll get started here in a minute and get this thing off of our face. Rick, Larry, thank you for joining us. So I'm not loading anything? Well, nothing has popped. No, oh, no, you're no just comments. seeing that. No, it's just showing where they're watching. All right, somebody comment, please. Just give us a test comment. Hey, Stacy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You never know sometimes with this type of technology if uh, people can hear us or not. And I'm not the most tech savvy person in the world, that's for sure. You can watch our past videos and, and know that. But, but we're getting better. I'm doing my best. And those of you that follow us on a regular basis, there will probably be a cat sighting. At least one or two. Always. It's expected. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I like that. As long as that keeps running, I don't have to keep looking down at my phone to see if we've got comments or not. Yeah. The only thing um, I don't really like about this, it doesn't tell us how many. Like how many are watching? Yeah. Yeah, I've got two showing on mine. Okay. But I've also learned that that's not always correct because 
I, I don't know. I don't understand why. All right, we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. And then whoever misses us can either come in late or, or of course, catch us on the replay. I know it's a work week night too. Post hashtag replay if you catch us on the replay. Put hashtag live if you're with us now. Oh, dumb. Don't make me go through my normal spiel. We're simple. If the red box is not on the corner, we are no longer live. Sorry. Hi, Ray. No? Okay. She just wanted to make sure you were still here. Okay. We'll push that button. Push this button? Nope. Nope. Yep. You can put that button back. Okay. Okay. Every time my fingerprints don't work. You don't get your message till a minute later. So Oh and I did forget, yeah. That there's a delay. There's a delay. <laughs> so to to that point, I wanted to discuss this with you. Um talk to a few people. Um Nick, you know, Nick normally watches our show at work. He said that there is sometimes up to a one minute delay. Yeah. Between what we're talking about and before it gets well, there to was them. a delay before I got the message that we were live. It was right. a pretty good delay. So, so that, that he made a recommendation about changing platforms, which is something I think you're already considering. This is our platform. What do you mean? Oh, as far as YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. They said that. Uh, and, I was and going to try to stream simultaneously to Facebook and YouTube, so you could just pick whatever your preferred option is, but um, this program that I'm using won't allow that. So we may... Um, it's one or the other? Yeah. So I may post a poll and see who prefers what. If you're better with the Facebook Lives or you may prefer watching us on YouTube. And now I've been told that with YouTube you get more... Like it's more live. What's the word I'm looking for? I guess it's more in sync. The there's not as much of a delay with that, and that's not to say that if we go YouTube, I mean we can still share a link to Facebook so that you can get to it through Facebook. That's not yeah, and vice versa. We can um, upload this to um, YouTube. We can upload this to YouTube and then, you know, whatever. I'll put up a poll at some point and I'll leave it up for about a week or so. And then you can just participate and let me know what you prefer. Right. Did anybody catch our comic strip today? I did. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Stephen Hemphill is watching. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. All the way from Ringgold, Georgia. Wow, <laughs> you're a long ways away. Okay, I'm gonna let you. Um, a week or so, do, a week or so. Oh, he's commenting, he's talking about what you said. What? About uh, keeping the, uh, the poll up for a week or so. You know. Welcome Jack a and week. the comic strip. A week or so. A week or so. I'm a whole lot taller than you. You're like a hunched, o hunched over no, old man. I'm, 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 you're sitting on two dictionaries. I'm kidding. I'm sitting on a chair. <laughs> I just have really bad posture when it comes to sitting at the table. I'm talking things that you say, see how long the delay, yes, is. <laughs> Good idea. Jack Haynes is awesome. He didn't top that. I'm waiting to see if he does. Go. <laughs> All right, anyway. Welcome to September 1st, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so ready for fall. 
Oh, tell I don't me know that. about you. That's my time of year is in same, the fall. Same. We are one week away from <laughs> the official end of summer. Uh, Labor Day is next weekend. Today is American Chess Day. Hmm. So those of you that like to celebrate or playing chess, today is your day. Of interest, I, I caught this yesterday and I wanted to bring this up because I thought it was kind of cool. Even though it's not today, uh, tomorrow, September 2nd, actually starts the Buddhist and Taoist Ghost Festival all over Asia. Uh, give you a little bit of information on it. It is celebrated on the 15th day of the seventh month in the Chinese calendar, aka tomorrow. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> Hello. Um, it is believed that on this day the gates of hell are opened up and the dead are allowed to walk the earth in search for food. It's kind of like their version of Halloween. They're searching for food? Yep. Because every day they don't feed you in hell. Oh. I thought they only wanted water. I don't know. I mean, in, in, wasn't it the newsboys that do that song called uh, we don't serve, They Don't Serve Breakfast in Hell? I mean, maybe that's why. But either way, these, they will, uh, the Buddhists and the people in that country will take fake money and they will burn it and they'll put it on their front porches and it's meant to ward the dead spirits away from their home. They take the money so that they can buy food. Why they burn it, I don't know. They use burnt money to buy food. Okay. But that's interesting. Um, in exactly 16 days... A certain lady to my left has a birthday. So it's birthday month. That's right. Yeah, if you're one of my Facebook friends, I was posting today that, um, uh, what was it? Let me pull it up real quick. Sept something about September better get. I'm going to read it. Yeah, have some sense. So it is, um, September, you better come in here and act like you got some sense. Oh, I wish I still had the picture. So, um, someone posted a picture today. Evidently, it was taken in, I feel like it was Los Angeles. It was close to a beach somewhere on the western coast. And it was a, the headline said, Woman <laughs> snatches picture. We burn money. We call it Starbucks. No joke. <laughs> word. Um, it was a picture in the clouds, and it says, Woman catches cube shaped UFO. And it's, you see the clouds and the sky, the city line, and you see kind of this dark square shaped shadow uh, behind the clouds. And somebody, the line at the bottom of the uh, picture was, did somebody have the Borg on their uh, 2020 bingo card? So those of you that are Star Trek fans or whatever, um, evidently the Borg are coming this month. Nice. You're going to have to be my button pusher because okay. what am I pushing? the camera's over here, and if I go for it, then... <laughs> exactly. Uh, this one? Nope. Which one? The one that's highlighted. Thanks. Cool. Uh, one other thing I will throw in, uh, just as a uh, quick kind of current event thing, uh, and you know we want to you know make sure we're sending out prayers to the family of Chadwick Boseman. Those of you that uh, have watched uh, the news here lately, uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther himself, um, passed away a couple of days ago. Um, had stage four cancer. Yeah. So, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, say prayers for the family. Uh, very unexpected. Yeah. Let's go to you. Prairie Turk. Oh, well, I took a drink. Okay, thanks, babe. I thought she didn't like my shirt. I didn't know I had a bubble in my throat. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> <clears throat> thanks. All right, hey, so. Kia, Kia's watching. Hi, Kia. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. All right. So. Our topic for today is um, pretty much goes in line with things that are going. Hey, Shayna, <laughs> good to see you. Or, you know, 
You see you me. You see her? But good to hear from you. Do you see her? <laughs> um, no, she's not dead. <laughs> so, there's that. How many people are in this room with us right now? <laughs> I can tell you this. They're all on my side. <laughs> they can stay over there. <laughs> okay. So pretty much going along with, um, I don't know, maybe some things that if you're a paranormal investigator or if you follow this field, pretty good. And, and, and especially if you have for um, a while or even, even just a couple of years or so. Um, has anybody noticed or seen reports of where there seems to be more demonic manifestations now than in times past? I'm not going to raise my hand on this one. Well, this is interactive. Right. So, be interactive. There. <laughs> so, what, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Why, why do you think that is, if yes? Or if you think no, why do you think no? Based on how the world is going. Right. I have my two cents worth, but I want to wait and see. No. You want me to go ahead? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a conversation that I've had with many people. Um, even before uh, this this team, this ministry got together, <clears throat> I've had conversations with people about how, I mean, you've noticed within the last, I mean, I think it started within the last 15, 15 10 to 15 years, that things have just gotten worse. Um, demonic activity. Um, it seems like we can't go on an investigation anymore without running into demonic situations and depending upon people's theories i've had people tell me it's like well you know they uh the, the veil is getting thinner um i don't know anything about that i don't pretend to know anything about the veil um my personal opinion uh we are getting closer to the end the devil knows that his time is short so he is doing everything that he can to steal as many souls away from God and from heaven uh, as he can, take as many down with him as, as possible. And also, I mean, to add to that, the number of paranormal shows that have popped up in the last 10, 15 years, all starting with Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, all the way up into Ghost Brothers and everything that we're, you know, we're having on TV nowadays, it has desensitized people to this kind of stuff and it also people have gotten interested in it and that interest and curiosity also draws that kind of thing in so maybe not i mean do you think i know we talked about desensitization before but do you think it's more so of a an awareness and that's what draws in that curiosity for them to dabble in things or or to see if to kind of test test the waters to see if it's for real or not oh absolutely i mean it's curiosity okay. hey leah people oh she's here leah on time yes <laughs> um people humans are inherently curious that you know we we thirst for knowledge it doesn't matter what it is i mean everybody likes to learn something in some shape form or fashion so if you get involved or something in the you know the paranormal something you know ghost movies things of that nature and then you start reading books about it then there's that whole hey i wonder if this ouija board really th that thing really works and then you go try it and guess what it works that first time because that's the, what the devil wanted well I, and i think a lot of those tools there um, when people are trying them out, of course, it's something to draw in curiosity, but once you actually do the act, then, of course, it's not going to, and we've talked about this many times, where, you know, anything demonic is not going to just jump up and go, hey, I'm a demon. Right. Um, it's going to come to you in the most benign, non-threatening thing in the world. So, there is an order to things especially if you open things up there's an order to them to close them if you do come across i'm just throwing this in here for some reason um, i'm not sure but i'm going to do it because i feel led to 
But I mean, if you do come across something that, um, <clears throat> sorry, that is been used uh, ritualistically or is um, maybe something. Are you referring to? Stop, okay, Dobby, stop. She's wanting to rub on the camera. <laughs> So, if you have, you know, any any trinket or anything that has a tie to the demonic, please, 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 do not burn it. And that seems Ever. to be everybody's answer to everything. Because what do I do with this Ouija board? Burn it. What do I do with this doll? Burn it. No. Don't. Um, those items are just that. They're they're physical items. So they are being used as a conduit. So if you burn it, then of course that releases what that vessel is holding and it's gonna go looking for something that it can possess or you know, uh, oppress or attach itself to. So uh, d don't, don't do that. If you ever come across anything, please contact somebody. Um, you can contact us and we can give you some um, recommendations to to properly <laughs> seal that and and get rid of it <laughs> we've done our fair share of those oh yeah definitely yeah but uh, also here's a thought so have the occurrences become more frequent or are they the same or just bolder and showing themselves now and I know that kind of tied in with some things you've already said or your right. thoughts and please, those that are watching, this is interactive. This is not you just watching us chat. Right. We want your input and your opinions. Please. Yes. So what do you think I about mean, that? That's, that's hard to say because, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'm, I'm stuck on that one because I want to say things are more frequent, but I want to say they're bolder too. Because, you know, you, there's people that have always had some type of, you know, occurrences in their home I mean let's turn the question around on you you at a young age saw things you didn't know what your ability was mm -hmm. would you say that the things that you see are the same in nature or they've gotten stronger now I know that as your ability has more fine-tuned that you're you, you can block stuff out better and stuff like that but would you say because I, I want to say both. I want to say that it's happening more and it's bolder. I want to say both, too. I know at a very young age, I wasn't seeing quite um, – how do I want to say this? I don't – I think I'm seeing or am I – I'm exposed more to things that are um, – Oh gosh, what's the word? Sure. Like before, I don't think they were as harsh or as threatening, and that could have been just God's grace because I was younger. But as mm. I've gotten older Delicious. and I guess spiritually matured, I've been able to handle. Is the malicious well, the word you're looking for? I believe God has trusted me to be able to handle the things that I've able to see. Does that make sense? Uh, it kind of makes me think of a phrase I heard, uh, I think it's Perry Stone say one time, different levels, bigger devils. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think, too, that some, depending on what level the demonic is, what level in the ranks that is, that um, people, depending on where they are spiritually, how mature they are spiritually, um, may not even fool with those. You know, they if they're lower, they may not fool with someone that is spiritually mature as opposed to maybe a higher ranking going head okay, to head. Does right. that make sense? I mean, it, it comes down to... What do y'all think? <laughs> I mean, someone's not going to go... At, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Right. <laughs> if, you know, if it's an... You know, I've heard the phrase imp used... If it's impish in nature, it's not going to go after somebody that, you know, has performed, you know, 11 exorcisms and all this other stuff. Um, it may go after, you know, someone that's spiritually immature 
um, people that, you know, again, curiosity gets the best of folks. Uh, they're like, you know, wow, you know, what if I, you know, call, what if I ask this thing to, to come into me and take my energy, you know, and stuff like that. Let me say that I don't condone that. I never will. Um, no. Don't ask for something. You know, someone's spiritually immature Thank like you, that. Leah. <laughs> Leah, there's something about Leah's. Y'all get, y'all, uh, y'all kind of get it. We get each other. Point. We yeah. get each other. Um, okay. Um, also, I mean, I believe that since things are getting worse in our world, and added that demonic powers do feed off of iniquity or sin, then of course I think it is becoming more bolder, and could be showing itself uh, more so. I, th I think here it's just kind of grasping for um <clears throat> i mean it knows the end's coming so um yeah they're going to try to take as many people as as they can and I, I think it's becoming more blatant to some degree there's a level of intimacy you want to avoid. oh absolutely absolutely and also just a a little disclaimer if you are somebody that of course is interested in the paranormal and you're one of those um, researcher investigative um, study types that you know wants to look up all different kinds of things please also uh, make sure that you are spiritually in a place uh, that you need to be because even just researching this stuff you can really um, start experiencing activity yourself um, also it can really bring you down a dark road if you're not able to recognize when it comes and and stop yourself and say okay i'm going to push this away for a while i need to fill my mind up with other things right now because it, it will take you down a path and that can i want to add to that that can come in seasons Absolutely. You may be a spiritually mature person, but if you've got things happening in your life, things that are just dragging you down, or you're, you know, we're human. If you're in a, a t you know, if you've, you know, fell back a little bit in your walk with God, or you've done something, you know, that maybe that's a time that you shouldn't be studying that kind of thing. I mean, there's, right. there's books that I've started, and I'll be like, I mean, well, nope, I think I need to uh, take a step back and maybe not read this now. Um, before we go any further, I was trying to highlight the questions to bring them up. Do we not have that option anymore? Remember when you could click on it and it would bring it up on the bottom of the screen? I don't screen? know how you did it. You did it the last time. Let me try here again. Because nothing's happening. I mean, it had to been through that. Hold on, hold it. Okay. I don't know. Oh, that stinks. I don't know how you did it last time. I haven't changed any settings, so. Mm. Stacy says, I believe it's been more frequent and we have noticed it more with everything going on. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, that that is my opinion and my thought process too, um, definitely. We are also seeing a pulling away from God and a compromise of things that God deems as sin. Um, sometimes we compromise our beliefs or um i guess not just we're not probably as grounded or rooted as we needed to, to be and sometimes our thought process um or even our heart can lead other than um our spirit um the holy spirit actually guiding us um to to understanding uh, got to be very careful of that. But the lines are getting more and more blurred for society. Uh, that in the chaos and confusion, of course, chaos and confusion, is, and confusion is prime conditions for the demonic to influence and take over. Um, all of these things, open doors, as well as blatant demonic practices. Plus, here's a thing too, technology today is more advanced and uh, with equipment that is more light sensitive than it used to be then we can see these entities manifested more so in like photographs right. and video i mean think of how far we've come in like the pixelation of cameras nowadays i mean you've got true uh 1080p 
pixelation now compared to, I think my first digital camera was a 32 megapixel. I don't even want to think about what kind of pictures that thing took. But, I mean, she's absolutely right on that. Yeah. Also, <laughs> so I want to show you um, a picture. And if you'll press that button for me. Right here? Yes, right here. I want you to look at this photograph. Um, I borrowed this from somebody um, and do this overlay. Okay. This is a photograph from Nick Walker. Um, I'm not sure if it's showing you or if you're able to see it well on your screen, but um, I'm going to leave this up for just a minute and just tell me your initial impressions. I'll give you a couple of minutes and then we'll discuss it. Yeah, because we want to make sure that we get the uh, that delay. Right, and, that's why I'm waiting. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to try this thing with the comments again. Since nobody can see me pointing at the camera. I don't understand why it worked last time. Was really cool. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> Van Gogh. Or if we pronounce it the way the British do, it's Van Gogh. Okay, so now, we're not I, just sitting here with the, right, I was a gonna, lot of silence. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I mean, what are your initial impressions of this night? Uh, <clears throat> so when I first saw the picture, I mean, in me, I mean, let me start out with this came from a credible source, um, but my investigative nature immediately had questions. Um, why was the picture taken? Where was the picture taken at? Um, <laughs> thank you, Jack. Uh, where was the picture taken? You know, what, what, why was it taken? You know, what are we exactly looking at here? I mean, at first glance, you know, clearly I see a light on what would be the left-hand side of the picture looking at it. And then there's something there in the middle, which my, I think my question to you was initially, is that a coat rack? What were your thoughts when you first saw it? I know you were watching the video whenever the picture came out. Now, I was really... You'd like to see what? Jack, are you able to see the picture on the screen right now? If y'all are not able Check to see... Check the... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, yeah, I've got it. Actually, based on what I'm seeing, it actually looks... It's pretty clear. Okay, great. Pretty clear picture there. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Um, so, I was really impressed with this because... <laughs> When I first saw it, I was, I looked over at Mike and I was like, you've got to see this because I just, I couldn't believe it. I've actually seen this. Now, I'm not saying it's this particular entity, but. Oh, no quality to it here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, if you can, and I may post the picture when we're done with the live just on its own that way you can you know blow it up if you need to and you can see the the characteristics better but um of course i can't point you y'all can't see me point but if you look towards the middle of the photograph you see kind of what is the a robe it's like a gray robe and if you go up a little further there's like a long um, arm of the robe Oh, it's turned wrong then. It's been... Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> um, you must have an Android. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, now, on the left, is that's an actual light that's there. So, I, I know that's causing some glare and things like that. But, um, as you go up the robe, and actually where the arm, where I would say like the long arm sleeve is, if you go up to where that ends... That's where the shoulder is, and then if you go across 
to the left and you go up a little bit, then you can kind of see the draping hood. Now again, I know it's small, especially if you're watching this on your phone. Um, I can, <clears throat> oh wonderful. I can, um, you know, post this picture <laughs> on its own. And, and I'm, when I'm directing this, <laughs> for Jack's sake, I'm not trying to put suggestions in anybody's um, vision, but um, I was really impressed because this is a really good photograph. And actually this photograph is a Polaroid. Which those, if those of you that are not of that generation that don't know what a Polaroid is, there used to be a camera that you could take a picture and it would spit out a physical hard copy right there on the spot. The cool, and I actually, in my early days of investigation, I carried a Polaroid camera because the best thing about them is you can't manipulate them. The picture is made right off the bat. I mean, th let me take that back. There are ways to manipulate it if you're faking evidence. But if you you know put the can the you would put the film in take a picture regularly, there was no question that whatever you got was going to be legitimate, and that's what we have in this picture. Uh, there's no no manipulation. The only thing that has been added is the courtesy of Nick Walker banner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yes, this is a, a demon, and. Um, I have actually seen this. I've seen it in gray robing. I've seen it in black robing. And then I've seen it in um, kind of a, not really gray, but kind of an off-white robing. So, um, but it's same type of dressing, uh, same type of um, how, it's, how it stands or how it, um, presents itself mm -hmm. but um <laughs> but i was really impressed with this because this is a really good photograph but it's just interesting that finally this was caught on camera and you know i'm always questioning myself you know i i do i'm getting more trusting of allowing god you know to use me in this area of discernment and um so it, this was just, I don't know, interesting to me, and I wanted to present it to you guys. So if you'll just, this was actually taken, you can undo it, at a church. I don't know what church or um, what city or state it was located in. It was in the basement, wasn't it? They were actually on an investigation, this, this investigative group, and it was in an old church. I, think, I would uh, love to go there. <laughs> evidently, the, the gentleman, uh, Nick, that when he took the picture uh, to start with, thought he had gotten, he had caught an angel. Right. Uh, but uh, upon closer inspection, no, no, no. Angels generally, uh, oh, what was it said? Generally, angels present like they have their own light radiating from them. There's several other aspects of an angelic picture. This does not qualify. Right. And plus, I, I knew just because I've seen it before. And if you have any sensitivity or discernment, um, then you maybe you've seen something like this or something similar. And it's tall. It's really, really tall. As you work your way up the robe, you can tell that it's a tall figure. And I've seen it in several places. I've seen it in a business. I've seen it in a home. And also, um, a bed and breakfast that we had investigated one time yep. but that was even a counterfeit so I mean it's just there's different things so that's what that thing looked like yeah because I remember the counterfeit because I'd never that was the first time we'd ever and we've talked about that on the show right. I, that was the first time I had ever run across that but I've seen it in ro the robes like you saw with the hood and it looking down and the reason why it's looking down is it's so tall that it's looking down at you or me, you know, it, it's just looking at who, whoever is there. But it, it just stands, it's tall, and it's just very intrusive and um, um, intimidating to some degree. But anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I just thought that was really cool and interesting. And um, 
don't be, if you were, don't be put off by the fact that it was in a church. Um, I saw my first uh, facial morph of an individual in a church. It was actually during service. Um, the lady was sitting on the second row on the like the right side of pews or chairs. I was on the left side of the church about maybe five or six rows back from where she was. And you know how you, sometimes you have that feeling like somebody's just looking at you? Well, I had that feeling. I was looking forward, but I had that kind of strange, odd feeling. I looked over and this girl, I mean, everybody was standing up looking towards the front. This girl had her head twisted back looking at me and her face kind of kaleidoscoped, morphed. And her eyes got really exaggerated and dark. And she had this huge grin, kind of like the um, the Joker, the Joker grin. And I know this is this is not her. This is not the picture. But I found I was trying to find something similar on the internet, and I came across this picture. I'm going to show it to you. That was it was very similar to this. But when I say it did kind of a kaleidoscope, like it would just twist back and cross over her face. Um, just morphing her face back and forth, kind of like a kaleidoscope. But see how the eyes are exaggerated and the smile goes up? Um, this was, I don't know, some kind of Snapchat or whatever. It looks like a filter. Filter. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Jack, I don't know. Jack says he's also seen a church face morph. Yeah. It's somewhat distracting. <laughs> somewhat. That's to put it lightly. But, um, yeah, this, when... Of course, it's very distracting, but, um, you know, come to find out later that this girl was heavily involved in some um, things she shouldn't be. And um, so that, I mean, just being involved in things can distort your countenance. And especially somebody that, you know, has that discernment or that ability. And, and you don't have to have abilities. God can allow you uh, to see what, you know, whatever he chooses. So, you know, I'm not anybody special or anything at all. Um, I'm just, and I've said this many times, I would prefer not to see half of this stuff. <laughs> but uh, if it can help somebody, then, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And if it's what God wants me to do, I'll do it. Right. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to share this couple of interesting things with you. But I wanted to talk about, um, just like there's an army of angels, Excuse me. So we're not even to the message yet? It's not that long. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So um, there is an army of angels. Angels are organized into ranks and operate um, <clears throat> in a military fashion. With every godly thing, there is also a, a demonic imitator. So there is a demonic army with ranking classified as follows from the top ranking to the lower ranks and if you'll push that other button beside the morph image you are special but not because of what you can see and do uh, that's what mr rogers told me every time i watched him <laughs> so you have your demonic army ranks sorry uh, the top ranking is principalities. Um, you can look up the scripture Jude, uh, chapter 1, verse 9. But principalities, they are the chief demons. A principality assigns demonic spirits to operate in the disobedient. They rule over... <clears throat> they rule over continents and nations. Do not mess with this rank. Even the archangel Michael, when, dispute, when disputing over the body of Moses, refuses to personally rebuke Satan, but he rebukes him in the name of the Lord. And that's that scripture, Jude 1, 9. The Lord and in, all, and the Lord and in his name, all spiritual authority is given. Um, we, as believers of God, have spiritual authority in his name. But if... And Archangel wouldn't even mess with this rank, then I wouldn't either. <laughs> like God, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and His angels.
take care of this. <laughs> Would you like me to read Jude 1 9? I have sure, it if you want here. to. All right. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. All right, the next one is powers or powers of darkness. Uh, they are evil officers and operate much like a policeman. I'm not saying that the police officers are evil. Please do not misconstrue my words. <laughs> they just operate, you know, like police enforce, um, meaning they have a delegated authority. Does that yes, make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so they operate in governments and government centers. Um, I mean, they, they're, they have a delegated authority. Uh, rulers of darkness are next. They cause chaos to things of order. <laughs> so if you're coming across maybe an individual or um, a family or even a business or whatever, if you're an investigator and you see there's a lot of chaos and just confusion, um, you may be dealing with somebody in this rank or somebody, some entity in this rank. Excuse me. I know some people. <laughs> He's up. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. No. And then lastly, spiritual forces of wickedness. These are unclean spirits people deal with daily. Some of them are named. Some of them don't have a name. Examples, those that do have a name, examples are Beelzebub or Ab Abaddon. Uh, they torment the mind and keep our minds away from godly things. So it's just those things that are just constantly at you. And it may even come subtly and you don't even realize and they're just there to oppress and bring you down and just, you know, just really get down and depressed. Oh. One of the kitties. I'm sorry, I'm getting dry. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I've been talking all day at work and has anybody noticed my Uncle Sa cup, my Tupperware here that Leo ordered for me? I love my cup. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, what do you think about this or anybody that's watching? Have you, if you're an investigator, have you encountered maybe one of these entities that you know of or you weren't sure, but, it, you know, it sounds, it sounds like something maybe? Well, I mean, I know for a fact, um, one word, Oklahoma, uh, print, we didn't realize till we got down there that we were we were dealing with a principality but the principality was over the area but there were powers also basically answering to the principality i mean you look at it from this in a in a military type structure you know if if we say that the devil is you know a government leader like a world leader um the principalities are like the the chief of staff, the cabinet, the czars, um, and then your powers are like your generals, and it moves down, going you know all the way down. So, whenever you're dealing with you know the powers like we were in in Oklahoma, we realized we were dealing that they were answering to an overall principality. Now we, like Leah said, um, we don't have the ability to deal with principalities. You can pray corporately against a principality, but you don't go head to head with a principality. No, you can fast and and you know leave it up to to God and His His angels to handle that. I definitely would not recommend anyone going head to head. I don't care if you're the most spiritual person in the world. I mean, like I said before, if even Michael the Archangel wouldn't. And you know he called in the the name of the Lord. Then just I mean back he, off. <laughs> another example in the Bible is if you go in the book of Daniel, when Daniel is praying for twenty one days for a breakthrough, and Gabriel finally shows up and says, "I would have been here sooner, but I was right. hindered by a demon prince of Persia." The right. prince of Persia was a principality. So I mean, even you know an, an angel like mm -hmm. Gabriel uh, has difficulty going up against. A principality he had to bring Michael in who is a warning angel to take care of that principality right and I know you talked about Oklahoma but I believe that we have every rank oh no doubt within I mean, that but that's I think I feel like that's the first time that we that you and I had come come face to face with that 
I mean, we've dealt with the level up on every level up on to that, but to walk in and realize we were dealing with the big bad, um, it was, I don't want to say it was overwhelming because we were equipped. I mean, by the grace of God and the ability that God had granted unto us, we were able to, to take care, to have God help us be his instruments to take care of business there. Now, is that principality spirit over that area? I, I mean, Absolutely. it still is. But, you know, we were able to take care of what could be taken care of for that family. Right. Um, <clears throat> and there were moments throughout that there was confusion and chaos. It was making personal attacks through other individuals <laughs> that... Um, using other individuals to make personal attacks to make us at different points in time question our ability or what we're really doing here or you know can god really handle this type thing and it just took a moment of removing ourselves really isolating ourselves and then getting our mind back where it needed to be instead of um, getting wrapped up in that because I'm telling you I've I mean I know that the demonic will hit you where your weaknesses are I mean that that's that's an easy hit and so which is why it always makes you doubt yourself absolutely if you have self-confidence issues or you know dealing with something like this was already scary anyway and if you're not scared going into something like that then I, <laughs> I think you need to recheck some things because I mean there's a, a healthy I don't want to say fear but I mean there's a healthy caution that um, really understanding the the magnitude of what you're dealing with I mean as an investigator you're not just going in and um, you know, waving a wand or or you know, sprinkling some things around or, or whatever, this is going to affect people's lives. You're going to leave, and whether it goes with you or not, those people still have to live in that home or work in that business or whatever, and they're going to be continually affected, dependent on if you were responsible or enough in why you were there and if you weren't doing your homework or not. Jack says, do you remember who do you think you are? And the response, I'm no one, but you know what, as well as I do that we answer to someone higher. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm sorry, you see Dobby ears. But um She's part <clears throat> of the show. Yeah, definitely. Um just be cautious, especially now more than ever. If you're an active investigator um, or in the paranormal at all, just please be careful because there's been many times we've been on investigations and it will present itself as something very benign, you know, like a child or whatever. It's going to be as benign as possible because it doesn't want to leave. Right. So when we're there, it's going to show itself as just nothing i mean let me let me make an example here you've got activity going on going on in your home what are you going to be more trusting of and keep it to stay a small child or something that looks like this i mean is this the kind of thing that you want in your home if this walked up to you and said hey i want to hang out and you know because i'm lost and i want to i'm scared i want to stay in your home can i stay here would you give this permission no, I don't think so at all. But if a child came to you, I mean, what's the most innocent thing that most people think of? A child. So They're like, oh, it's just a child, or I think it's a family member or something. So, you know, don't get rid of that. Just only the bad stuff. Well, sometimes your bad stuff is presenting itself as... Your family. Your family or a child or, or even an animal. So, I mean, just if you're unsure, if you're an investigator and you're unsure, then please, I, th I have more respect for a group or an investigator that says, this is kind of out of my scope. Let me refer you to someone that this is 
more of their area of expertise because, and I hate using expertise because there are no experts in this field, but you know what I mean, that has more experience. Um, experience is the only thing I'd say that there probably is in this field. <laughs> right. And all kinds of different experiences. And, ex and experience does not equal wisdom or expertise in this at all. <laughs> and then there's that. <laughs> so uh, Let me jump in here with Jack's comment. It oh, says, sure. the night something called me out by name and tried to make it a personal fight, but I wasn't about that. I reminded it we all answer to God. Absolutely. And that was just like in um, Oklahoma. We were with a really large group of people, and it just seemed to come on all of a sudden. And when I say all of a sudden, so much so that when people started asking me questions and attacking me, I mean, I weren't, I, they weren't being hateful or rude, but just questioning everything how do you know this where'd you come up with this how would you be able to get this information i mean it wasn't just like it was four or five people all at once just bam 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 right. on her and she turns to look at me and i'm astounded because i don't even know how to respond because i was not expecting that at all i was looking for some uh, backup or help and i look over at mike and he's just like exactly i mean did not expect that at all because i mean we had and we didn't realize till afterwards that it was an attack because we had talked to the, the people. We had, you know, talk, had several conversations on the phone before we had even gone down there. And we never had that happen. And then all of a sudden, it's just rat-a-tat-tat. And I'm, my, my, my mind is like, are we even talking to the same people? Right. So, I, I mean, I know it, at the moment, I know she was just completely, I don't want to say at a loss, scared, whatever, but... She was looking for me, and I didn't even know how to respond to it. And and I, I don't know if I've ever fully apologized for that, <laughs> but I just, I did not know. I would, did not expect that under any circumstances. I was practically almost in tears. I did not want to be in tears in front of these people because we were presenting as a professional group. So I just stopped, and I said, if you don't mind, I just need to go outside for a minute. And then when I went outside, I lost it. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it was just, I don't know, you just had to be there. It was just in the manner it was presented and the things that they were asking and just, you know, um, I don't know. It was just I mean, it, it an makes, experience. The best way I can explain it, and this is not how I'm painting the picture, but let me, I'm using this as an example to those watching. Imagine that you've worked really, really hard on some type of presentation, uh, whether it be for work, school, or what have you, and you've done like all these long hours of study and you feel yourself, here's that word again, an expert at that, and you make your presentation to a group of people and then that group just butchers and tears apart everything that you worked on. Because, I mean, that's, that was your baby. You worked on that project and now you've got people just ripping you apart about it. That, I mean, I feel like that's how you felt. Well, is here you were with this, you know, hey, this is what this is. And then it's just immediately question, 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 question. Well, and we were, what we were presenting to the group is our evidence, our, our findings, and then our recommendations. And, of course, our recommendations are biblically based and definitely more so, you know, absolutely in this situation because now keep in it mind, was this was pure night demonic. One. We were there for three days. This was the first night. So Was it the first? No, it was the second night because later, uh, later that that's night. That's right, because the first night we just got there, we kind of walked through. Yeah. We didn't do anything, and it was night two that this happened. Now, I want to bring this up. If you guys actually want to go back into our video archive that far there is video uh evidence of this we've got a couple of lives that we did uh in oklahoma um that you can go back uh it's been has it been two years now oh easy almost two and a half two and a, two two and a half years so if you, we of course don't have all of the investigation no. shown uh, there was a point where we uh made all the cam we we called for all the cameras to be turned off because uh, the uh, it was starting to become a battle and we didn't want any transference through the cameras. We've discussed that before. <laughs> but um, if you're interested in that and you want to scroll back in our archives, we do have the 
the lives that we did from that investigation, you can see some of the things we were dealing with. Right. Um, but anyway, um, I don't want to just keep harping on Oklahoma, but back to talking about our uh, army ranks of the demonic. So, I mean, how, how do we deal with this demonic army now that we know about it? Quit reading my notes. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking over there. I'm not even really reading them. So definitely the demonic, they don't want people's eyes of understanding open concerning them. They operate in manipulation and covertly. So the greatest weapon they have is that people don't believe they exist. If you believe, if you don't believe they exist, then, I mean, what's the harm? Why should I have to worry about this? You know, it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not real. So therefore, it's not affecting me. You know, that's, that's why I love our slogan so much is, I mean, we're not here to convince you one way or another right. whether there's the devil or not. We're here to help. I mean, the truth is, the truth's the truth and a lie's a lie. So, I mean, I hate I mean, that. <laughs> but, I mean, he exists whether you believe it or not, period. These drugs are not affecting me in any bad way. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, that's just a natural example. Um, so, I mean, basically, we're not here to get into a, a theological argument or to even argue if he or God exists. That's already truth, okay? So, we we don't even go there. We're just here to help. Right. <laughs> I mean, we, we do have to admit, you know, to a lot of people when they call us up, I mean, the first thing we tell them is, you know, any any suggestions or help that we offer are going to be from a Christian and biblical standpoint. Do you have an issue with that? And I'm noticing the longer we've been doing this, the more we're getting the answer is yes. You know, we want that help. Um, in the beginning, we weren't getting that. We were getting people like, "Oh, y'all are Christians." Like, what? I thought the the cross and the logo was the kind of the giveaway, but uh, <laughs> the word ministry helps too. But I'm I'm, I'm poking fun. Well, um, I mean, and plus. We even get to where they say yes, and then when we offer that, they're like, well, I don't believe that's the only way that that can be fixed. Well, okay. I mean, that we told you up front, you know, this is how we do things from a biblical perspective. So, you know, maybe we're just not the group for you. The one, uh, the one that I, I, I think is, I, I don't even know, I want to say funny, but I mean, in, the, in, the, in reality, it's not. <clears throat> Those people that are like, you know, do you want help? Well, absolutely. You know, well, you've got to give up your your drugs and alcohol and your pornography. And like, well, wait a minute, you didn't say I had to do that. You mean I got to change my life too, mm -hmm. guys? You got to realize some of that stuff that you're you're doing. It doesn't have to be witchcraft and wizardry. <laughs> um, people can get attachments. Um, thank you, Sean. And yes, Jack, the truth is out there. Um, some people just don't see right. it or recognize it or. Whatever. I mean, I just, I just completely blanked on where I was going with this. But yeah, it's a lifestyle change. It right. really is. I mean, so the things that you're dabbling in in your lifestyle can bring on demonic attachments. It doesn't have to be playing with the demonic. If you're out dealing, you know, wheeling and dealing drugs, you know, that, that can become an oppression, an attachment, um, living a promiscuous lifestyle. I mean... I, I, that's a, a, a lesson for another day. I could go on and on about promiscuity there's, and how that's yeah. breaking off pieces of your soul. Right. There's a spiritual transference. I mean, yeah. If y'all are interested in that topic, I mean, we can just deal with that topic. There's so much information. Right. That's, Every time you have an intimacy of a sexual nature with another individual, then there there is a spiritual transference and binding. But... Anyway, like you said, that's, that's a Actually, lesson for another day. I, I, I touched on part of that in our very first uh, video live when I talked about can you tie your soul to another person. Remember, and, and I'll end it with this. I'll end this topic with this. It says in the Bible, when a man and woman come together, they become one flesh. There is a binding there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sean says that's a deal breaker. What's a deal breaker? Lifestyle change? Well, <laughs> too bad. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> You have my drugs, but you'll never get my alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol's a crutch, man. Baby steps. Witches know about that binding. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. That's why um, sex is used in a lot of their rituals. 
Absolutely. Especially when you're talking about with virgins, because even then there's a blood covenant. So, and that's another lesson oh, for another the, day. <laughs> what's the first co- What's the first covenant in the Bible, guys? A blood covenant. Marriage covenant, blood covenant. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, we need to. We may need to teach on that. <laughs> I feel it. Okay, so if you push that other button, this one. Yeah. All right. So if where was I here? Okay. So in Ephesians twelve. Which my phone does. Uh, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So basically all those ranks of um, the demonic armies that I was talking about, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So that means that we're not wrestling against other people. It's... I'm sorry. Yes, Sean, Sean says, you not, can not keep get your out sex. Of <laughs> your sex won't change unless you have an operation. Sean, are you transitioning? Anyway, so we don't wrestle don't against tell your wife. we don't wrestle against flesh or blood. We re, we are really wrestling against those things that have either possessed or oppressed or attached or they're using individuals as to manipulate um, and, and to use to do their bidding. So just remember that we need to separate the individual from the sin or the, uh, the lifestyles that actually um, lead open doors um, to um, demonic forces. Don't hate the individual, hate the sin that is their life that is in their life and pray for them. That's, that's all we can do. Um, we, we need to love people. We need to love people, okay? Um, we don't need to define them by how they're living or, or that we just need to love on people, right? 100%. Okay, so for you personally to try to deal with these types of entities, just make sure and if you'll pull, pull that up and then the side thing. So um, make sure you're wearing the whole armor of God, not just bits and pieces of it, all of it. And right here is, is a really nice uh, picture graph of the different pieces that are in the armor of God, what they are, and what they fight against. So I, I really appreciated this um, piece of artwork and I'll even just post it onto our um, our Facebook so you can make the picture bigger if you need to because yeah, even I can't hardly read all let that me bring cool. it up I don't know how well y'all can see it but I will bring up the picture and read what is in it so if you start at the top uh, that's the helmet of salvation uh, the enemy wants us to doubt God Jesus and our salvation but the helmet of salvation will protect your mind and identifies um, a soldier's allegiance. So that shows that you're a member of the of God's army. If you go further down, it says the breastplate, the blah, blah, breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. So this is the righteousness of God. It protects your heart. So Satan attacks our heart, emotions, our self worth, trust. He accuses us of being guilty and unworthy but god says different so when you wear this piece of armor it protects your heart it guards your heart next is um further down and to the left the left of the picture i love everyone <laughs> you guys keep up the good work thank you sean <laughs> um is the shield of faith so the enemy attacks with insults setbacks and temptation so this protects protects us from fiery arrows they cling to hope in Christ and refuse to believe the lies I love that at the very bottom are the gospel shoes that's what I always heard it called when I was a little kid so it helps you to um, it's the gospel of peace and it it's uh, to help you be available and ready so the enemy wants us to think that telling others the good news is a worthless and hopeless task, but that's not true. Okay, if we circle back up to the belt of truth, this protects will. 
So not some dude named Will. <laughs> Unless it's you're like you, a Christian it, named Will. It's like you read my mind. <laughs> but Satan <laughs> fights with lies. Only believers have God's truth. So this is the belt of truth. <laughs> and then up is um, the sword of the spirit. So when tempted, trust in the truth of God's word and it protects us from lies. So wonderful. So I will uh, post that separate along with that other photograph um, just for y'all to blow up, make bigger, you know, whoop, your screen. Whoop. Does it make that noise when you do it? <laughs> whoop, sometimes. So yeah, make sure you're wearing the whole armor of God. Living a life of worship. Okay, this will not only bring you peace and soothe your own soul, but, I mean, it protects you, too. It's a protection. Loving others unconditionally, that means no conditions. Do what, you know what, how hard what, that is? What does that mean? <laughs> Do you know how hard that is? Think about that person you work with or even a family member that you could just give them a high five. To the face. To the face. <laughs> Love them unconditionally. Well, someone had to teach me once that, I mean, we all assume that, you know, love is, you know, when you hear love, it's like, oh, butterflies, unicorns. Mm -hmm. eh, um, love is a choice. I mean, it's, yeah, there is there is an emotion behind it, but it's a choice. You Sometimes to, it's not an emotion of love. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's an emotion of I'm going to kill you. <laughs> right. I would love to <laughs> love. kill you. I would I love, love you, you that lo much. Love you to death. <laughs> um, I learned that you can love somebody and not necessarily like them. Ever. But it, yeah. But it, it, it's a choice. And I, I want to say this for, you know, if anybody needs to hear this, I know it's just not, it's not that type of uh, live, but, you know, it, you feel like, you know, you're not like, you know, somebody, you know, you're having trouble in your relationship and, and you feel like the love is not there, make the choice to love. If the feeling is not there, make the choice because the feeling is not always going to be there. Your emotions and feelings will betray you. Right. Thank you for putting it more eloquently than I did. Yes. Um, cause the, I mean, like I said, you know, God made a choice to love us. So we, in turn, have to make the choice to love others. And yourself. Yes, you can't love others if you don't love yourself. Yeah. Because then you don't know how to love. That's a lot of love. <laughs> it's I, not even Valentine's Day. <laughs> love is an action, not a feeling. Yes. Yeah, you're right. This is September. Why are we talking about, we're supposed to be talking about, like, gourds and dead leaves and stuff. Oh, well, forget what we just said. Yeah, this is... We'll revisit this in a few months. Right. <laughs> Don't knock my elephant off. Pumpkin time. I'm excited. Okay. Um, also, breaking those curses that open doors, you can open doors through disobedience, unforgiveness, emotional trauma. You know, emotional trauma can open us up. I mean, we're at a weaker state of, state of mind. And even if you're overstressed, stress, if you're in the medical field or even understand that, it work, wreaks havoc on every body system you could ever have. So that puts you in a weakened state already and can open you up. Uh, wrong vows or judgments. Uh, beware of those words that you say, I will never or I will always. That's a vow. Or judgment right also breaking curses uh, something that repeatedly hinders you or creates struggle in a certain area of your life habits bad habits will fall under the curses or even if you've noticed that the same mistakes or the same things happen within the generations of your family and to even your generation that is a generational curse we've, right. we've talked about those before um i mean if 
just an example because and I'm, I'm saying this because uh see you jack he's got a jet going oh. back to to sean and his alcohol um i mean if you're an alcoholic and your father was an alcoholic and your grandfather was an alcoholic and he kind of goes down the family i mean yeah don't get me wrong there's sometimes it, there are sicknesses that are um not generational is not the word i'm looking for hereditary but something like that, if you see that kind of going back in your family, you may be, it may be something like a, gener, a, a generational curse uh, in that fact. And seeing Sherlock just completely threw me off. He looks like a, a big dinosaur. He's like, so he's the baby. <laughs> he's a baby. Look how big he is. He's our 27 pound baby. But that, that's just an example. <laughs> I mean, if you're seeing the same type of thing continuously happening, in your family throughout the years, you know, you're yeah. dealing with this, you know, you're dealing with the same thing your mother did. Yeah. And you can also build a hedge of protection, not just around yourself, but your family, your children, uh, things that you have authority over. You can build that hedge of protection. And it's not always to keep things in, it can be to keep things out. Right. So, um, so yeah. Um, so that's all I have. Right. Any questions, comments, queries, posers? Shall I go ahead and tap the last one? Um, when we're about to leave out. Okay. I'm sorry, Sherlock's up here. Y'all can't see him now, but he's just all sprawled out. He's just a big baby. I think it's very, very good information. Um, I like the way you, you spun the light on it. And this, I, I just can't. I can't get over this picture. I mean, the more I look at it, it just, it gives me the willies. I mean, t t tell me, you know, when you first saw this picture, with, if, if you were to see this picture with no explanation, what was the thoughts that came to mind immediately? Well, that I've seen it. I mean, I, I didn't need an explanation. So let's, I've seen it. So let's go back to what I said. When I first saw it, the investigator in me immediately wanted to know you know is it this is it that did that ever cross your mind or when you saw this did you think immediately this is legit um no when i saw the um how the stance and the the size mm -hmm. and how ever like the robes fell um when i say fell you know how it fits it drapes the over, figure yeah, yeah. and drapes it was just, I don't know, that instance, that instant guard of, yeah, and it just floods back all those times that I've seen uh, similar things to this. Okay. I was just curious. I mean, like, I, I trust me when I say I believe it, you know, when I see that picture. Mm -hmm. But there's, it, I know that there are people, there are investigators out there like myself or people that may not believe in that kind of thing that you know they're going to question it well sure so i mean and i'm not surprised and i have said many times over you know i'm getting better about it but i used to question myself a lot because that was most of the feedback i got of you know people they don't see things like that so it was just like well you know maybe it's not real maybe it's just something that is just your imagination running or uh, away with you or whatever but but i can believe you someone else seeing something like that and giving proof that's that's validity right there right and it's not it's not even the most menacing or horrible thing that i've seen because i've seen some really terrifying things i mean um what was it just what was it it was not too long ago we were watching something it was last weekend and it just impressed me, not in a good way, <laughs> so much so that, I don't know, I, I'm just so sensitive to things that I feel it a hundred times over. Mm -hmm. And um, we were watching something and I was just like, you've got, just talk to me, you know, just talk about anything and she never and of wants course me he to was, talk he was, right. so this, <laughs> i mean that should alert you first off but when i was asking him to talk then he wanted to talk about different aspects of 
of what we were watching. I'm like, just talk about something else. I was trying to just get it out of my mind. But see, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> because, I mean, generally, you know, because we were watching, it was a scary movie. And it's one of those things that we usually, just because of nature of I what, watch them all the time. But by nature of what we do, we pick these things apart. Yeah. Well, like, oh, God, I can't believe they would do that. Or, you know, you can tell that's not real. You know, that kind of thing. And so that's, well, she's wanting me to talk. I'm like, okay, so what's t we'll do what we normally do. Let's pick this movie apart. <laughs> I didn't realize she didn't want to talk about the movie anymore. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Especially, uh, of course... Scary movies of old times, and tell me if you feel the same way, but um, old time scary movies like Jason and... Um, Those are just dumb. And Freddy Krueger and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's just... It's silly, is what it is. But... It's the psychological <clears throat> ones. Paranormal, paranormal films nowadays, there's such a raw emotion and truth in them. It's so close we, and sometimes spot on I, I th we've talked about this to, to each other I don't know if we've ever presented this but I would go on record and saying that a lot of these very realistic movies they're coming from a place someone didn't just sit down and come up with that right. they there's were heavily influenced there's some experience there yeah that and heavy demonic influence um, so you have to be so, if you're um, sensitive or spiritually in tuned, that it's just overwhelming at some times. And the other weekend or whatever that we were watching this, it was just, you know, when you're talking about seasons. Mm -hmm. Well, it was so, we've seen that movie a gazillion times. I've seen it a gazillion times. She's watched it more in than In the I dead middle of the night, on stormy nights, on daylight. I mean, they don't affect me that much. But just like in seasons, sometimes it affects me so Excuse much me. that if I just keep thinking about it, that it's going to manifest. So that's why I want to get my thoughts off of it. I don't want to think about it because, I mean, there's been places that we've been and something's been on my mind and it's manifested and I don't want that what was that a uh, game that you can play on that app where you go to different places oh <laughs> randonautica have y'all heard of that well we did it and <laughs> we were um, trying to test it out and I mean there were some coincidences that so, made you wonder real quick those of you that don't know about it just to give a quick synopsis it is based off of random number generators and what it does is it's supposed to give you random coordinates that are near you for you to go visit the intent is to try to get people to get out and just explore places they wouldn't normally go and one of the things it says in it is whenever you are setting your random coordinates to set an intent now, that does not mean you type something in. It means you think about it. Now, does that work? We decided we were going to test it out because why not? Um, and I'll let her pick up from there. I just wanted to explain how the app works because I know there's a lot of uh, TikTokers, Facebookers that uh, actually do videos where they've gone out and, and done what they call rando nodding. And they found some pretty interesting things, and I know we did too. So. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think more often times, I'm so sorry, <laughs> more often times than not, it led us to like off the wall places. But there was a couple so of instances. So many backyards, so many backyards. <laughs> there was a couple of instances that was really interesting. Like there was one time that I was just focusing on taking a photograph, like I was picturing that I was behind the camera and taking a picture. and. Um, he goes like, okay, we've got a location. I didn't say anything out loud, but um, just thought of it really, really hard. Quantum more so physics. that I was just imagining it. And um, it led us down so many back roads and everything out in Cleveland somewhere. And um, <clears throat> it led us to this person's yard. Now, there was a house in the middle of like an industrial 
place. It wasn't like a neighborhood. It was an industrial park, and then you turned down a road, and there was a row of houses. And this one was actually one of the nicer ones. Well, anyway, um, so the yard that it took us, the coordinate, was this person's yard. And they were outside on the porch with a bunch of balloons, and someone was there taking their picture. It's like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, that's weird. <laughs> interesting and then there was another time that um i told him i was like i'm not going to tell you what i'm thinking of so i was thinking of it thinking of it thinking of it and we went down this back road again and it even turned into like a dirt road didn't it yeah well I don't, we didn't turn down the dirt road well no no but i was like and then when we got there i was like i don't feel good about this and I'm like well what were what were you thinking of and i was like uh santeria <laughs> And we were in a Hispanic community, <laughs> come to find out. It was a Hispanic neighborhood. Yeah, and so I was like, let's just go. <laughs> yeah, don't don't even want to, to test that any further. But it was taking us down a dark dirt road, like towards the end of it. And it's like, eh, no, we're not going down there. <laughs> I ended up deleting that in the long run because we... We had far more like Misses, duds yeah. than we did anything else, so... I mean, Jack says quantum physics. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, if you're a a nature lover and a hiker and, yeah. and you like to get out, I mean, now, of course, like I said, we got a lot of yards. So maybe this would be better if you went out, you know, somewhere out in the country. Yeah. Or and whatever and set up stuff. Or maybe even like a state park or something. Absolutely. Because one of the, we actually had one that took us to a gated house and the, the coordinates were like 200 yards past their gate and it's like uh, no we're <laughs> yeah no we're trespassing no trespass that, and it tells you that in there not, not to trespass but i mean it was interesting it filled up a, a free evening so uh <laughs> so anyway but yeah if you ever do do that just be careful don't right. go in nobody's yard and especially now people shoot you as soon look at you but anyway they think, they think you're bringing the covid <laughs> but anyway does anybody have any questions i don't want to keep y'all too late i know it's uh like it's a, a work, work night. night some of us got to be in at six o'clock in the morning yeah but we have been getting a lot of uh, messages um and i think a couple of phone calls of either they called and then send to... us a message or vice versa but um had people sending us evidence to take a look at been some pretty pretty compelling stuff some stuff even i don't have explanations for right so but if you need any help or anything you can definitely contact us you can talk contact us here on facebook messenger you can uh, call this number 423-402-0386 or even text it you don't have to talk to us if you don't want to i know and a lot of people feel like i mean i know people call the number to see if it's legit and then hang up <laughs> um i get it i honestly i mean i've gotten into i mean i don't know if it's my age or what but i've gotten to that point where i would rather text somebody than make a phone call and i know some people are not comfortable talking about this type of thing what's up ted <laughs> um don't be afraid to send us a text we respond to text messages too yeah, and you can also email us. Um, and I know if you send us a message through Facebook Messenger, you'll get an automatic reply saying that um, we'll get with you as soon as possible, and it has our phone number up there also. Just know that that happens. <laughs> it's automatic, so if you'll just be patient with us, especially if you send it in the middle of the night. Um, we do sleep. We do sleep, so... I mean, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And, um, yeah. So, you can ask us any questions or whatever. I'll post those uh, two photos for you guys if you want them. Thank you, Jack. We love you, too. Yes. But I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you for being patient with me. I hope it was informative. And if I you decide it. you have a question later on, you know, shoot us a message. We'll be here. All night. Well, right here. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Negatory. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, next month, October, it's our season. Yes. And once again, and remember on uh, the 17th, blow her Facebook up with happy birthday messages. 
Actually, you can go ahead and do it now. It's her birthday month. Um, we do take uh, PayPal at that phone number. I'm kidding. Venmo. I'm kidding. Venmo. <laughs> uh, you can email uh, gift cards to paranormalhelp at Or we can send you a mailing address. Right. <laughs> We're just kidding, guys. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next month. Yeah. Bye. Bye.